Hello. World of Warcraft Arena, it has kept us engaged with its high intensity and limitless skill ceiling. But the true skill in Warcraft is not deathing the blind or pre-porting the go, it's knowing what all the different team compositions are called. WoW's history is etched not in stone, but in forum posts. Forums that stop paying their server hosting fees and disappear. Arena names have a very vague history because there is no central authority, no popular vote. Names stick when enough people use them. Team-based games often use shorthand to refer to strategies or compositions. The term Zerg Rush was so effective at evoking the philosophy of a strategy that it broke free of StarCraft and is now a widely accepted term in the gaming world, and probably the corporate world as well. Comp names are ultimately a tool of communication. So why are they so bad at it? Today we will answer that question and so many more. It's time to disentangle comp names. Be warned, we're about to blaze through 14 years of history in about 20 minutes. I don't care what PhD was called on Agamar in 2008. This is the best I can do with a very fuzzy timeline. And certain names had to be cut. So like for instance, nowhere to put Thundercat Cleave. Well, I mean, I could just kind of, kind of just, it's not, oh God. The year is 2007. We're all cranking up to that soldier boy and basic as shit. And the Burning Crusaders has been released for the first time. There are about six good classes with maybe four good compositions between them. Here they are. So how do we go about representing a composition like Rogue Mage Priest? Oh. Oh. Well, would you look at that? Comp diversity is pretty shit right now, and it was pretty bad in 2007 as well. At the time, there was only a handful of playable comps, and each class only really had one viable PvP spec, so spec rarely comes up in these early compositions. If you saw a warrior, he was going to be arms. If you saw a warlock, it was most likely affliction, or SLSL, I guess. So if we expand out this format, we can see we end up with a pretty comprehensible list of names. There's a structure to the ordering. We go melee first, range second, healer third. There are a few edge cases though, like LSD, which has the shaman in the range DPS slot. That tells you that the shaman is elemental, and thus LSD is a double cast composition. See, there's a, there's a strategy here. LSD, we make it work. Now before we go any further, a word on PMR. PMR stands for Priest Mage Rogue and is the same as our RMP composition, but the ordering has changed. Now as far as I'm aware, this ordering is the earliest example of the acronym format, but eventually it would pivot to be in line with the more general format we see here. With Burning Crusade Classic Eminent, there are gonna be people who are gonna to try to convince you that PMR is still accepted terminology. These people are gonna pretend that they're fucking cavemen who have been frozen in ice since early 2007 and don't know any better. Like, oh bro, the new Good Child album just dropped. Do you wanna crank that shit up on iTunes and cue some PMR? Do not fall for this. Burning Crusade Classic is gonna see new comps turn up that were not around during the initial release. There is no reason to thaw out long dead terminology for clout. Do not fall for it, do not cue PMR winners. Don't cue PMR. So this next part is a little hazy. During BC there was a group of people who played a double melee comp. The top search result says it was Rhett Warrior Resto Shaman, but the wiki says it was Rogue Warrior Resto Shaman. It doesn't matter which. What matters is they were called Cleave and were perceived as cheesy or scummy. So the term Cleave became a pejorative for any basic bitch double melee team that would hunt down a single player with raw damage and minimal CC. And it didn't take long for other variants of Cleave to start cropping up. These early Cleaves were defined by association. So like Enhancement Shaman Warrior would rely on Bloodlust to hunt down a single player with huge damage and aggression. They were there for a good time, not a long time. It was a Turbo Cleave. This format expands if we get these new names. PHP becomes Cupid Cleave, you know, with the Rep Paladin's wings and the Hunter's arrow. It's still in a thing, you understand. You know, it's Kitty Cleave, it's Feral Druid, and a Warrior, it's, it's pretty self-evident. Beast Cleave with huge burst setups from the Shaman's Spirit Wolves and the Hunter Pets. You know, a single player was chased down by an unrelenting army of pets. It was quite the sight. We'll see it in like two years with the Wrath Classic. Thug Cleave, Guns and Knives. Thunder Cleave, Lightning Bolt and Thunder Cleave. I don't really know this one, but it's... Thunder's just a cool name. You know, it's classy, so... Thunder Cleave. Ebola Cleave, very edgy. We got the bleeding of the Feral Druid and the disease of the uh, Death Knight. I remember first hearing about this at the peak of the Ebola epidemic. It's very tacky, but... 
And then we got Liberty Cleave, Death Knight, Mage, Death Priest, you know, the colours of the US flag, you know, what do you think of anything of the US? Liberty, among other things. But this is an important moment in arena history because this is our first example of an arena team being used as a tool of propaganda. Like, is, is the CIA involved? That's a dangerous question to be asking. The most popular example of this association trend is probably Smoke Bomb Cleave, which was popular around WAD and centered on killing someone in a smoke bomb. So, Smoke Bomb Cleave. These names are short, piffy, and fun. You can see how a name like Thunder would usurp like WSP as a composition. And you can make a case that like Beast Cleave is just a flat out better comp name than like SHD or something. Like there's less decoding to go into a name like Beast Cleave than there is whatever the fuck I just said before. So all these comps may have done better or worse with specific healers, like this, in this little picture here, it's a little, little holy paladin that's uh, apparently unkillable according to the author. Uh, the names tend to be more concerned with the DPS plays because they set the framework of the comp. Whether or not Turbo Cleave was better healed with a Paladin or a Druid, neither change the inherent philosophy of Turbo Cleave, its inherent turboness. This idea of the DPS setting the framework and the healer being a bit less relevant would infect our classic abbreviations as well. X can be used to slot in to represent any number of potential healers. RMX is a composition where Priest, Paladin, Druid, sometimes Monk, can all slot in and you get something a little bit different every time, but all can work under the right circumstance. This is a consequence of Arena developing. With each patch and each meta, it became more likely that we'd see, you know, a Mistweaver thrive healing Elemental Shaman and Warlock. Some anarchists would call that LSD with a Mistweaver. Beware those people. But back at Cleaves, names start getting a bit more abstract. Take Jungle Cleave. Like if I tell you that it's a Feral Druid Hunter, you don't feel duped, it's... You know, you've got the Survivalist and the Big Cat, both at home in the jungle, both evocative of the jungle. You know, it's, it's a bit abstract, you've got to work a little bit, but it makes sense, you don't feel duped. But how about this one, KFC. If your mind jumps immediately to Kentucky Fried Chicken, so you think, oh yeah, maybe, maybe Fire Mage Balanced Druid Healer, that could be fun, that's fun. Congratulations, you're wrong. Stands for Kung Fu Cleave, and it's Warrior Hunter Healer. Three classes known for their ninja-like abilities. So why Kung Fu Cleave? Because the first people to succeed with a Warrior Hunter and a Healer called themselves Kung Fu Cleave. So the name stuck for over 10 years. This is the beginning of a trend of names named after names, where people who create comps get to name it after themselves. So we also have TSG for an arena team called Tasupa Gosus, who played Warrior, Death Knight, Paladin, I think it was. Then we have Vanguard's Cleave, named after Vanguard's. Some guy. So as the cop name meta expands, we can see they're becoming less self-evident, and they're beginning to expect something of you. You have to bring something to them. They aren't inherently intuitive. We're in Wrath by this point, and we start seeing some clowns try to push the limits of our name association system. This is the era of Old Spice ads, so team names like Lumberjack, Cleave, and Man Cleave are the height of comedy. You know, we get Kanye Cleave, so the joke here is that it's a comp with a lot of interrupts. Ask your parents. Though these comps were never real, they created the idea that arena comp names could be jokes. The name would serve as the setup, and the actual composition would be the punchline. It's called Kanye Cleave. Why? Because you're constantly being interrupted. This predates the RMX format, so when we got a variant TSG that used a Resto Druid rather than a Holy Paladin, we got Tree SG. With the introduction of Death Knights, we also got DK Hunter Holy Paladin as a popular comp. But you'll notice its name, PhD, it's, uh, it's wrong, it's out of order. PhD should be Paladin Hunter Druid, which it was. See, look. See, it's been a little PhD. So this, this just kind of stole its name. So smart people will change it to PhDK, but like, the name's still wrong. So around 2012, people start seeing success with Af Warlock, Balanced Druid, Resto Shaman. The same classes that make up the infamous LSD composition. Now this had the potential to be a problem, but deep breath, relax, the founders planned for this. The ordering allows us to account for this change. So all we gotta do is swap the Druid and the Shaman and call it LDS. Why didn't you just call it LDS? and no one would ever be confused by this decision ever again. Now's as good a time as any to talk about African Turtle Cleave. African Turtle Cleave is Protection Warrior Hunter Healer. It saw some play in early Catter and then made a comeback in Wad with Gladiator Stance, but none of that answers my central question. What the fuck does African Turtle Cleave even mean? Like, 
Turtling is a common strategy, but why Africa in specific? There is no singular African turtle. There's the African helmeted turtle, known as the African side neck turtle in the pet trade, but nothing about this innocent creature screams protection warrior hunter healer. Why must the turtle be African? Is it a racism thing? I'm just gonna play it safe and censor it just in case it's a racism thing. It was used as a template for what is easily my most reviled name. Mongolian earthworm cleave is a series of meaningless words seemingly derived exclusively to piss me off. It can't get any worse than this. Shadow play is Warlock Shadow Priest Healer. One of these classes has a unique naming convention where play will be in every one of their names, the shadow play, and the prefix, in this case shadow, will indicate what the other class is. So based on that, can you tell which of these classes has a naming convention? That's right, play represents the priest. Yeah. Shadow Cleave gave it away, didn't it? We have fun here. We have fun here, we fucking... No, we don't have fun here, actually, because I need to explain that, like, no way I wrote that script in... No... We don't have fun, because no version of the script made sense, because this name is inherently contradictory. Like, so Shadow Play is Shadow Priest's thing. That's what I need you to follow here. That gives us a few different variants. So we've got Owl Play, Shadow Play, Kitty Play, Scatter Play, which, you know, Scatter Shot serves less of an important role in the comp nowadays. So for brevity, I tend to cut one of the syllables from, uh, from that there. That's fine. A notable exception to this format is RPS, Rogue Priest, Resto Shaman. And you know, it's just, RPS sounds nice. <coughs> Shadow Play is unlike any other name we've seen so far. Shadow refers to a particular mechanic Frost Mages have, where they freeze a target and then shatter it for huge damage. This was used as the foundation for huge burst setups that could often kill a target in only a second or two. So a name like Shadow Play requires not only an understanding of a unique naming convention, but also a passing familiarity with the term Shadow and what spec it is referring to. So there's layers of prerequisite knowledge that puts it very far away from like RMP or Beast Cleave. By the sort of cat em -op era, we've had a chance to revise our punchline format and come up with some new material. This is our true postmodern era, where wordplay and jokes refer to compositions that, you know, were actually good. What do you call a sub rogue based around Shadow Dance and a Balanced Druid? It's fucking Dancing with the Stars! Can't call Fire Mage Balanced Druid KFC? Spicy Chicken Cleave! How about Frost Mage Balanced Druid? Frozen Chicken Cleave! There isn't really an official term for arcane mage, balance druid. Like the low hanging fruit is magical chicken cleave, but yeah, we can do better than that. <laughs> Suggestions in the comments. Retribution and rogue, haha, <laughs> retro, Scooby Doo cleave. And then come the absolute stinkers. We get edgelord comps like Hitler cleave and Stalin cleave. Again, these are reverse engineered to get the edgy names and weren't actually real comps. On the variant side of things, Radicals experimented with Shat Tree Play, combining Shatter Play with the Tree SG variant from earlier, and this is Shat Tree Play is actual insanity. Someone sticks a Frost DK and a Frost Mage together and names them after the seven-time Grammy Award-winning band Coldplay, a name that would be very funny if it was not in flagrant disregard of a years-long convention we already covered. Play means Shadow Priest. So with Coldplay, you're signaling a Frost Mage, which is just renaming Shadow Play. No Coldplay, it won't go on the board. But you might say, oh, no choice. Coldplay then could conceivably be Frost Death Knight Shadow Priest. To which I say, we have unholy play for that. To which you might say, oh, well, it doesn't need to exclusively be unholy. To which I say, I am trying. This is falling apart. By the time we get to monk comps, it's time to uh, remix more existing names. Great. We have Windwalker's signature comp, the Walking Dead Cleave, or simply Walking Dead. This is honestly one of the best comp names ever. It's intuitive while still having that piffy, jokey quality to it. It's a very good name, one of the best we've got. We have Thunderfist Cleave, replacing the weapon-based warrior and thunder with a fist-based windwalker. Oh, and suddenly Thundercat from earlier, starting to make sense. See, I did work it in. Thundercat's a variant of... I got it on the board. I was able to make it work. TSG is TSG healed with a Mistweaver Monk. It's doing the uh, Tree SG thing, variant with the healer. KFG subs out the warrior for a Windwalker monk. This is in direct contradiction to the comp we just saw. I didn't make this. What do you what do you want from me? Okay, next we have No. No, I won't do it. Mongolian armadillo cleave. Subbing out the earthworm for an armadillo because I guess monks roll. Mongolia doesn't have armadillos. This brazen invocation of the Mongolian armadillo makes me question if Mongolia even has earthworms. Um, 
which which side of this is the which which one's its head? So you know what? We're cancelling Mongolian armadillo cleave. In the research for this video, I found Walking with the Stars, which is much funnier and just all around better. Wind Walker Balance Druid is Walking with the Stars. In Mop and Wad, Frost Made Shadow Priest Resto Druid was one of the strongest comps around. With its limitless crowd control, it often felt unbeatable. Shat Tree Play was seemingly set to be a name we'd all have to get used to. But then, Divine Intervention. The composition is renamed in the image of the Almighty himself. It's uh, what we call the comp, God Comp, with the Frost Mage and the Shadow Priest. So I to say that this God Comp very confident with their Holy Paladin God Comp. The God Comp CC, we've seen it time and time again. At the time of the name's conception, God Comp is a perfect demonstration of why these names are valuable. If you were trying to push Arena and what God help you, you would need a solution to God Comp, because it was played in a very particular way. God Comp was one specific thing at one point in time. He needed a way to condense that huge set of ideas down into a single package. What are we playing against? God Comp. We need to look out for specific things and play a specific way to earn a specific win condition. However, God Comp is also a showcase on how these names fail. God Comp was one thing at one moment in time, and as expansions roll out and metas shift, that moment passes. But even at the time, people debated whether or not God Comp had to include a Resto Druid because Holy Paladins were very good in the comp as well. Hell, in the process of editing this video, it became clear just how much more popular the Holy Paladin variant was. So God Comp isn't Shatry play, it's just Shatter play. We've consumed a long-standing name from its own convention to replace it with an entirely new name based on a very specific moment in time, a moment that has passed. Frostmage Shadow Priest hasn't been a top tier comp for years. However, Firemage Shadow Priest is a good comp that has seen plenty of tournament play in the last few years. The lists will call it Fireplay, but in practice they just kind of inherited the name God Comp by virtue of it sort of being a good made Shadow Priest comp, and the Frostmage certainly wasn't using it. So the end result of all of this is that a name that was once so pointed has become a muddled mess, and we get this from the commentators of the AWC. I, I do like that this God Comp or shatter play what what actually what do we call a uh, mage shadow priest holy paladin in shadowlands i actually don't know what the what the name of that composite i guess it's mage shadow priest holy paladin that's probably the name i'm of boring it, right? that's what i call it but you know <laughs> it's not boring it's it's explanatory these are people whose job is to communicate these ideas to a general audience and vinruki one of the best mages ever if not the best just has no time for it he just shrugs and it's like who gives a shit the name has lost all meaning and so isn't helpful. Oh, we're playing God Comp? What spec is the mage? What's the healer? Oh, it's a holy priest? Well then it's just shadow play, you dingus. Then Rookie's right to see it as more harmful than helpful. You know, classes don't have a defined PvP spec anymore. It's not just that a mage can play arcane, frost, and fire, but that there's a difference between them. The distinction between them matters. You can call it arcane RMP, but then you've just kicked the problem down the road. What if the rogue can be both a sass and sub? Assass, Arcane, RMP. Oh, but uh, both Holy and Disc of Bible right now, so I guess it would be Arcane, Assass, Holy, RMP. This board isn't a tool for communication. It's a barrier. A list of trivia and contradictions full of pitfalls designed to catch out the uninitiated. And it's something that the community silently overcame. If you look again at the monk comps here, you'll see that with the exception of Walking Dead, all of them are variants, or some sort of spin on an existing name. There was a sense of obligation behind them. We didn't get Chung Lee Cleave or Drake Cleave, we got TSG. Just recycling things that came before. We saw with the release of Demon Hunters that people tried to sow seeds of Odd Couple Cleave or Hero Cleave, but it scorched earth. No one had any interest in names like this. You know, we didn't get Hero Cleave, we got DHDK, DH War, WWDH, DH Boomy. At the beginning of this whole process, we could depict a composition with three letters and bicker about the ordering, and it just it feels so simple looking back, doesn't it? Legion overhauled the vast majority of classes, and in my opinion, this resulted in the biggest single shakeup to the meta we've ever seen. One of the more strange but undeniably potent comps was Enhancement Shaman, Demonology Warlock, and Resto Druid. Shaman, Warlock, and Druid, those same three classes again, in a new form. They named it LSD3 because, of course they did. The Holy Paladin variant was extremely popular at BlizzCon in 2016, which if you're paying attention, you'll already know is called Holy Paladin LSD3. For half a decade now, I've truly believed that comp names are just dead, but with the release of Shadowlands, there is hope. Death Knights gained access to a new ability called Slappy Hands, that like, you know, repeatedly grips in enemies. 
This combines with the balanced druid Solabeam to devastating effect, allowing them to set up huge AoE setups and an inescapable silence. And this is something that could not exist before. It's new and fresh, proof that innovation in the arena comp name sphere is not dead yet. A new comp had emerged and were given a new name, Death Stars Cleave. And you know, it's a beautiful name in part because it contains that needless plural and pays homage to what came... Wait. What? Death Knight Moonkin? Yeah, Death Stars. Death Knight Moonkin. That's already on the board. No, no, this is new. This didn't exist before. Zombie Chicken Cleave, it's right there. Zombie Chicken Cleave? What have people been calling it? I mean, they've not been calling it anything. Like, two people made YouTube videos and I put it... You know what? I give up. Comp names are dead. The composition that I am playing is Balanced Druid, Frost, Death Knight, Holy Paladin. You know, the mainstays are still around. People will bitch about RMP until they switch the servers off, invoking whatever form RMP takes. But these names are closer to informal nicknames than formal terminology now. We've seen arena teams evolve from simple acronyms to one word shorthand to impenetrable jargon. We've seen them prove unfit for purpose and mostly disappear. It's the kind of thing that Richard Dawkins would love to talk about if anyone ever thought to check in on him. We threw all our best ideas at the wall and only the strongest survived. That's the marketplace of ideas for you. I guess the best solution to comp names was just not to have them. And I guess that's that. But see, for me, something would be lost. When I look at this board, I see propaganda, I see bigotry, I see innovation and humour, I see humanity. We set out to create a clear naming convention and obviously failed, but we created something so much more. We created art. And I don't mean like art uh, isn't it beautiful. Our system of naming arena compositions has a lot in common with folklore. Folklore is one of a handful of tools for mass communication in a non-literate society. Religious ideas, societal values, practical advice, they can all be injected into stories and songs that spread between people like a virus. You first used the term LSD too because someone else said it, and they got it from someone else. Like folklore, the authors responsible for these names are long forgotten if they were ever known at all. This board is the product of dozens of people whose ideas have been reinforced by thousands. Thus, the chaos we're seeing is not unexpected. Folk tales were retold through word of mouth. Details were altered and misremembered in such a way as to often make them inconsistent. There's a version of Little Red Riding Hood where she unwittingly cannibalizes grandma. Now that's a fucking choice. There was no single author, no central authority. Your unwitting cannibal Little Red Riding Hood was just as valid as my witting cannibal Little Red Riding Hood. And the reason that matters, the reason folk art matters, is that it exists outside the artistic establishment. Be it under feudalism or capitalism, the value of art was determined by those in power, and they elevated art that agreed with their worldview, art that they felt captured truth. Take pre-industrial Britain. The dominant artwork of the era was created and disseminated by the elite who saw the poor in terms of their labour, you know, sweat on the brow, toiling the fields, all that shit. They were defined by their value to those in power, those who had the formal training, whose artwork would hang in the galleries. That's where your image of a pre-industrial British farmer comes from, the eye of an outsider. But through folk art, we can understand how those farmers saw themselves. Where elite paintings in the Tate Collection might show such people laboring in the fields, here they are shown as they wished to see themselves, dressed up on a festive day instead of working their fingers to the bone. So when it comes to understanding the life of an 18th century British farmer, which of these rings more true? Look again at this board we've made. Through making a list of fake names for a bad video game, we've explored our collective history, our collective sense of humour and our values, and those will outlast any forum post. What we've created here today depicts the values and aesthetic of the competitive World of Warcraft subculture from years 2007 to 2021 a encapsulation of 21st century gamer lingo, demonstrating an advanced understanding of association, pun, and metaphor. We'll start the bidding at 10,000. Yes, well to the understanding eye is just a rickety cork board that I stole from the back of a private school, propped up on rusty legs from an old shelf, is in fact art, and a very valuable piece of that. You know what'll outlast a forum post? 15 kilos of fucking cork. 
who needs folklore when you can have the real thing? Like, come on. Folklore? Do you, you really want your art to change whenever you look at it? Bloody hell, what a farce. Little Red Riding Hood? How about Avengers Endgame, bro? God. A few suggestions for uh, new comp names. So we've got Outlaw Rogue Balanced Drawed Healer. That's Elon Musk Cleave because it's entirely speculative and will get someone killed eventually. We've got uh, Blue is the Warmest Color, Double Fire Mage uh, Resto Shaman, with meatballs and yeah, you, you get it. Uh, we have Death and the Play, that one's a fun one, a little, little, little word play there. Um, and Trans Rights Cleave, but I didn't have time to print that one out, so I don't get points for it. That's, that's it, that's the video. Okay. Stop.